Greetings psychology students. Today we're going to look at a topic that for many of you will hold a great deal of interest given that you are learning how to drive and some people who are watching this video are probably booked in to go for their license. So we're going to look at the effects on consciousness of a full night of sleep deprivation versus a legal blood alcohol concentration. And just to give a bit of context to what we need to know about this part of the course, have a look at the second part of question 6D from the exam in 2018, a couple of years back, where the question asked the student to basically compare the effects of a full night of sleep deprivation versus a legal BAC on driving. So I'll come back to this a bit later. So first of all, earlier in this area of study, we had a look at the effects of both stimulants and depressants on brainwave activity. So just a recap, alcohol is of course a depressant. And what we mean by depressant it, it is that it will slow down central nervous system activity. So the effects of that is that alcohol will reduce alertness, concentration, cognition, etc. A bit later on in the course, we will have a look at the effects of sleep deprivation on cognition. And as is the case with alcohol, it impairs cognition and concentration. So we've established that both alcohol and sleep deprivation have a detrimental effect on cognition and concentration. But we need to back this up with some empirical evidence in order to substantiate some of the figures that we need to know for, for the course proper. Probably the best experiment, the one that gets the most literature in the VCE course is the Dawson Reed experiment from 1997, where they used a repeated measure design in order to eliminate participant related variables, such as experience with alcohol, sleep requirements, body mass, etc. And they basically kept people awake for 28 hours and tested them in 30 minute intervals to see how their cog cognition and concentration would be affected over time, the longer the duration of the sleep deprivation. They did likewise for alcohol by giving people um, dosages of alcohol under controlled conditions and measuring their BAC, their blood alcohol concentration, and giving them similar tests um, when they reach these certain levels of, of um, blood alcohol concentration. Now, if you look at the lines of best fit for both the alcohol and the sleep deprivation um, condition, you'll see that there's a downward trend, as you'd expect. The more, um, in the, the, the greater the BAC, the greater the level of sleep, sleep deprivation, the bigger the decline in their performance on these tasks, which again measured concentration and cognition. So the two key statistics that we need to know is that once an individual reaches a BAC, the legal limit of a fully licensed driver in Australia of 0.05, that that has a similar impact on their performance of task measuring concentration and cognition as someone who hasn't slept for 17 hours. And then we take that further by making the comparison of someone who hasn't slept for 24 hours, their performance on task measuring both concentration and cognition is going to be similar to someone that has a BAC of double the legal limit in Australia of 0.10. So getting back to the VCAR question from a couple of years ago, it was a three mark question, so therefore three points are required. And in the stem of the question, it did mention that we were looking at a bunch of geologists who haven't slept for 24 hours. So the first mark is for stating that those geologists who haven't slept for 24 hours, they're gonna, have, they're gonna be at a similar level of risk in terms of tasks requiring concentration and cognition as someone with a BAC of 0.10 which is double the legal limit. Second point is we need to make a clear link to the scenario which has to do with driving. So therefore you could have mentioned something like um, the person, the driver is more likely to have a perceptual distortion and not notice that the lights are changing from green to amber, or you could have mentioned that they've got diminished concentration so they might not notice. Um, things like changing traffic conditions, etc. And then, because the question actually mentioned at the back end of it that we're looking at a legal BAC, 
A legal BAC, again, in Australia is 0.05. So therefore, a comparison needs to be made um, and you need to basically finish off by saying that the driver who hasn't slept for 24 hours is more at risk of having an accident because of their diminished concentration and cognition as opposed to someone with a legal BAC of 0.05 or under. So getting back to the key knowledge area of the study design, we've already looked at a comparison between the effects of alcohol and sleep deprivation on both cognition and concentration, but there's also mood. Now, alcohol can actually be a social lubricant. It can make people relaxed. It can actually enhance mood. So here's, where, here's a point of difference between alcohol and sleep deprivation in terms of mood. It can cause a quite a dichotomous response. So in response to the actual key knowledge area of the study design, we need to be able to make a comparison between the effects of a legal BAC, 0.05 or under, and a full night of sleep deprivation. In cognition and concentration, there's a similar effect, although, as I said before, uh, the, the effects are going to be more severe for someone who hasn't slept for 24 hours versus someone with a legal BAC of 0.05, but both um, conditions are going to diminish concentration and cog cognition. Now, mood is the exception to that. If a person hasn't slept for 24 hours, they're going to be more irritable. They're going to be more moody and volatile. If they're if they're a legal BAC of 0.05, there's a fair chance they'll actually have um, a spike in their mood. They'll actually be more relaxed, happy, etc. So again, opposites.